Today's story is about an American defense contractor that gets caught up in a dramatic event overseas that forever changes his young life. And the craziest part about this story is that we actually have all of the pictures leading up to this event. So stay tuned to the end to witness with your own eyes a massive double twisted ending that you would never see coming. In November of 2010, an American defense contractor was slated for some time off of a grueling overseas project. This defense contractor is still alive today and a bit of a public figure, so his face has been obscured to preserve his anonymity. We're just going to call him by his handle, Squirrel. So for a lot of defense contractors that work overseas, it's really popular to continue to take your leave overseas. There's special tax rules where you don't get taxed if you spend X amount of calendar days out of the year. So it's especially popular for single contractors to continue their vacations overseas so they can reap the tax benefits. Now Squirrel was a big diver and he had been working in a hot climate for a long time and he wanted to go someplace nice and relaxing and maybe catch some nice dives. It just so happened that one of Squirrel's teammates was a world-class diver and knew a lot of nice, beautiful, out-of-the-way spots to go diving. So Squirrel's friend drew him a little strip map to his favorite diving spot in the Philippines. Uh, if you don't know, a strip map is just a little ad hoc map. It's almost like a treasure map that you'd find from an old pirate. Turn right at the palm tree and X marks the spot. You just follow uh, the little ad hoc map that uh, your buddy draws up for you. This map was a location to a very remote site that you could only get to by outrigger, which kept the normal tourist riffraff away and prices pretty low. So Squirrel bought his plane tickets to the Philippines, put on his backpack, armed himself with his strip map, and headed off on his adventure. Squirrel was flying him to Manila, but he wasn't staying in Manila, that's a really busy city. So the plan was the first night, just find a hotel, crash in Manila, and the one thing Squirrel has to do that day is find transportation down to the southern port of Batangas for the next day to catch an outrigger out to his island. So Squirrel found a nice western style hotel to stay in for the night, checked his bags, and then was talking to the concierge. You know, did, did he have a ride? Does he have a cousin or somebody that's out of work in the family? that uh, Squirrel could hire out for the next day to drive him down to the southern port of Batangas. Now Squirrel's a pretty experienced traveler and one of the tricks that he keeps in his pocket is he likes to ask for help from people in establishments, uh, people that have a vested interest in keeping him safe while he's out traveling about. Sure enough, the concierge had a f member of the family with a truck that was willing to take Squirrel out the next morning, eight o'clock, down a half a day's drive to the uh, port, southern port of Batangas. Squirrel looks at his watch and sees he's still got half a day to check out Manila. So he leaves his hotel and starts adventuring around downtown Manila. This immediately creates a problem. Manila is a very busy city and it's jam packed with people and cars and Squirrel's having a hard time getting around. He doesn't know the language. There's no clear forms of public transportation. Heck, he hasn't done any research. He doesn't even know what to go see as a tourist spending half a day in Manila. So he's walking around a bar district and one of the bars, he sees a Union Jack, you know, the British flag, up on the side of the bar and figures, well, you know what? They must speak English. So Squirrel walks into the bar, orders a beer, and strikes up a conversation with the bartender who ends up speaking very good English. Squirrel informs the bartender about his plans and how he wants to see as much of Manila as he can in half a day before he's got to leave out the next morning. And the, he's having a hard time getting around and was wondering if he could hire a tour guide. And the bartender says, great, there's a couple girls that work here that you can hire out for the night as your girlfriend. Yes, in the Philippines, they respect a woman's right to work the oldest profession known to man. Do you not wish to arm yourself by my fire? <laughs> and Squirrel says, okay, fine, but just understand that I'm hiring her as a tour guide. So the bartender goes upstairs and tells the girls get ready and in the meantime, Squirrel and the bartender are striking up a great conversation. The bartender's name is May and she's actually from Manila, born and raised, and she's really excited that Squirrel wants to check out her city. So May and Squirrel continue their conversation about all of the wonderful things that Squirrel can go do to check out Manila and his jam-packed action half a day that he's got to check out Manila. After a while, about half a dozen girls come downstairs and while they're all very pretty, 
None of them really speak any good English, and none of them are from Manila. So Squirrel just turns to May, the bartender, and says, hey, you know, you speak really good English and you're from here. You'd really make the perfect tour guide. Uh, are you busy? Can I drop you back off later tonight for, your, for a night shift? May gets a shocked look on her face. Then she exclaims excitedly, me? You see, May, she was everything that the other girls were not. <laughs> That's a very nice way of saying that May was not very pretty, especially compared to the other girls. May, not used to the attention, jumped at the opportunity. She would love for a chance to show an American around her city. Squirrel was elated because he literally could not have a better tour guide. So the two walked off outside the bar door to go adventure Manila as much as they could for the rest of the half a day. Right off the bat, May takes Squirrel on his first jeepney ride. Now. A jeepney's a very Filipino uh, mode of transportation. It originated from leftover jeeps, American jeeps from World War II, that the Filipinos, they're very crafty individuals. They make what use of what they got. A lot of roads are pretty bad and impassable mountain roads to get from town to town on islands. So a popular mode of transportation is to ride and round in jeepneys. May first took Squirrel to an old Spanish colonial fort that actually still had the functioning moat around it. In fact, in World War II during the Japanese occupation, the Japanese used this fort to house American POWs. May, being a bartender, knew the guard and could pay him a couple bucks to go back where most people weren't allowed to go. You see this? This is where they actually kept the American POWs. Next, May took Squirrel on a horse and buggy ride through the downtown garden section. And they also stopped by to see the oldest church in Asia. Remember, these, this is from the Spanish colonial era that brought their Catholicism with them. And everything was going great, but a few times in a few of these more seedy areas, uh, Squirrel and May were approached by some little kind of teenage thugs. Squirrel could tell they were saying something angrily in Tagala, but you know, Squirrel didn't know any of the language. Squirrel confronted this group to stop following them. And immediately the little nasty kid gang leader whips out a Batangas knife and flashes it at Squirrel. Now a Batangas knife is at what we in the West would know as a butterfly knife. And it actually originates in the Philippines. And that was the port where Squirrel's actually heading out of the next day. He's leaving out of the port of Batangas, which is where Batangas knives originate from. All interesting history lessons aside, Squirrel knows that this is not a situation to further provoke and May decided it might be smart to leave that section of the city just to, you know, extricate themselves from that situation. So they take a, a ride over to a new section of town that has Manila Ocean Park. Manila Ocean Park is billed as the most intense aquarium experience in the world. So May and Squirrel, they tour the aquarium and they go through the tunnel where you can walk underneath the aquarium and all the animals. Next, they catch a live family style open theater show put on by the aquarium. And finally, they wind back up in the section of town right across from Squirrel's hotel to catch a nice dinner and a show theater. A group of indigenous entertainers put on a show while they serve you indigenous foods. Squirrel had such a good time, but he was going from the plane overseas through, through Manila and he was jet lagged. He was starting to get tired and wanted to go back to his hotel. That half a day was action packed and could not have gone better. And he made it very clear to May that he was just going to go back to his hotel alone and go to sleep. Squirrel actually tipped May double the price of what May wanted to charge him for being his personal tour guide for half a day. This made May so happy, her face lit up. She was just so happy that she could have successfully shown an American a good time in her city. They say goodnight, and as Squirrel's turning away, May catches his attention and says, Hey, hey boss, I have a secret. I am Ladyboy. Yes, yeah, if you guys haven't guessed it by now, I was that defense contractor. This is the story of when I got Ladyboy. back on it, that little miscreant adolescent gang that was falling around talking to me, it was because they thought I was a tourist. That's a real thing that happens over in the Philippines. So I don't want to hear it. I almost got 
standing up for trans rights. <laughs> hey, come on, man. All right, you got to let me make it up for that one, okay? Eventually, I did make it by Outrigger to that hidden dive spot and ended up having the time of my life when I really just needed to detune. There, I used my tried and trusted strategy about befriending the right people, and this time it worked. See? Do you need another shot of that face? How about on the beach? All jokes aside, the diving was amazing, and this photo right here came from a, the one dive that I actually had professionally photographed. I feel like this is like my own personal little mermaid moment. <laughs> and this is the hazing ceremony for me passing my enriched air diving certification. With the children all. Yeah. yeah. Well done. And you know, I had to go and do it. I had to fall in love. This little Honda dirt bike here was freaking awesome, man. <laughs> I ripped around that entire island, like practicing riding with like one hand, you know, you see? <laughs> and surprisingly, just ripping around that island on that motorcycle, I took some of the most beautiful pictures I have ever taken in my life. So I know what you're thinking. Squirrel, you gotta let me have a copy of that map. And the answer? is no, it's too dangerous. Booby trap, booby trap, that's what I said, Sam said it's booby trap. This is my contracting brother. He's airborne infantry and he's so tough, he can pull off a pink shirt in combat. Hey Joe, are you ready? Let's go, here we go. Let's get ready to rumble. I gave this dude the map and he didn't even make it out of Manila before he got caught between two rival factions of violent little people. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of today's story, and I'll drop the Mr. Ballin stick. Uh, Mr. Ballin, much love, bro. Thank you very much. If you guys are not familiar with Mr. Ballin, that's who I was just completely knocking off right here. He's a, a former Navy SEAL um, that now is a giant YouTuber. He tells really interesting bedtime stories on YouTube. He's just a really good personal storyteller. Uh, I was just trying to mimic him as, you know, awfully as I could. So, uh, it's always better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. Uh, Mr. Ballin, thank you for letting me borrow your format. Nothing but respect, buddy. <laughs> thank you. That being said, maybe we could show our appreciation to Mr. Ballin by suggesting a story he should cover over on his channel. And this video right here catches you up on my story the fastest. It's hilarious, and I suggest you give it a watch. You guys know the same judge that hit my triple attempted He's also wrapped up in one of the most famous Appalachian Trail cases. Bled to that sunny day as a result of the sniper's bullets. Claudia Brenner was with Rebecca that day last spring, and although she was hit five times, she managed to trek four miles for help. I'm going to ask Claudia to tell you what happened that day. After Judge George and his whole bench hid my triple attempted for his buddy, I spent five years collecting the information on the local racket. So aren't you also somewhat famous for having a gay panic defense? So go hit up Mr. Ballin, cause we got one heck of a story for him. This is a two punch deal. He could start off with the Claudia Brenner story and how despicable this judge's actions were during that and then have the judge get burned by a, a veteran later in life who he tries to hide his triple attempted Now that would be the perfect social justice story. Go away, hero. Famous for gay panic defense. And all y'all Spartans watching and helped me out along the way, I can't thank you enough. I just ended up punching way too high with this story and I'm shadow banned. I can't get this out. The only one that can help break the story is you. Yes, you. Yeah, I'm pointing at you right now. So share this video with some friends and hit up Mr. Ballin for me, please. I'll link him down below. Anyhow, thanks y'all. Much love until the next time.